I love your new avatar, actually. I think it's actually pretty cute. Now, at this point, I can also stop sharing as well. Ooh, all so, right. So welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining in at this point. Uh, just a few things about what are we going to do here and also a few words about Henri before we start with the conversation. Um, this is a very informal discussion we call the Smashing Hour. It's like the hour where we are talking about everything. It doesn't have to be front end. It could be you know, pretty much any kind of questions that you have. So bring up whatever is interesting for you at the moment. Uh, whatever you'd like to get some thoughts are also not only from Henri and me, but also from everybody who's joining us on this call, of course. And one thing that I do want to mention is that we have a live transcription going on, a closed captioning, so you can enable it if you go into there, uh, dot, 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 more, and then you, have to sh you can show subtitles, uh, and then you can also follow along with the transcription. Uh, now, before we start, if you can turn on the camera and just wave friendly with a very calm and gentle smile at only <laughs> that would be fantastic i mean um, you, you could also go in the chat let me know where you're from drop a little flag that, that works of course as well you know. right so please just uh, let us know where you're joining from and again this is a very informal thing so feel free to interrupt us feel free to speak up and oh, ask a question man. directly and you know whatever interests you just bring it up that's fine hello uh, i gotta say hello to paul calvano who's in the building Oh, that's yeah. excellent. Hello, Paul. Uh, yeah. Hello, Beth. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. We have Irina from Canada, from Montreal. Yeah, uh, I have to say hi to Matt James. You know, I usually have reservations about people with two first names, but, you know, he's my man right there. Hey, man, it wasn't my fault. <laughs> well, that's right. And, and by the way, Matt, congratulations on the, the last, uh, I think, submission. And I believe you're done, right? Got my last grade this morning. Awesome. Well well, congrats. Thank you. Excellent. I will also have Andrea from Bologna. Oh, I remember Bologna. I remember that dinner, that six courses dinner in Bologna. Wow, that yeah. <laughs> that will never be forgotten, like ever, ever, ever. So that's uh, incredible. Uh, well, and we have Sylvia from Cologne and we have Magnus from Sweden. Excellent. Thank you so much for uh, writing is always very nice. And of course, hello to Adrian, who also happens to like CSS and write about CSS for smashing uh, from Osi, Croatia, the Kuden city, of course. And everyone else, excellent. Now our ghost, ghost, guest, not ghost, uh, guest of honor today for I the smashing hour. Sometimes. I hear. Mm, is Henri, and Henri is known for so many things, but he's, you know, we will not talk about your past I mean, it's not like a dark past, it's a light past, right? A bright yeah. light past. Um, but Andres has been spending quite a bit of time in the web performance. So if you ever stumbled upon any kind of performance meetup, performance talks, performance uh, articles, you probably will have stumbled upon Andres' work as well. He is also a big jogger, or well, runner is the right way of saying that. Uh, so running forever, non-stop runner, runner as well. Uh, and recently he started a new job somewhere where he moved away from being you know, kind of working on his own and organizing conferences and doing this and that to a slightly larger organization. Henri, would you like to share with us uh, what the transition was like? Was it difficult? I, was it easy? And also, what is your role at the moment? Absolutely. So first of all, um, you know, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. I'm not sure what the time zone is. Like, you know, I've, I've seen a few people here, uh, Germany, Netherlands. Um, shout outs to the Netherlands. I just had, uh, had to order some magazines from there. Uh, long story, but uh, I'll tell you about it later. But regardless, um, I want to thank everyone for taking some time uh, and, and joining us today. Um, I think, um, you know, uh, as, I don't know if, I don't think we were live at the time, but I, I, I told Vitaly, I think, uh, you know, he and the team have done a wonderful job in the sort of uh, area of community building. I think that's very important. And I think the reason Vitaly and I sort of like see eye to eye because I'm a bit of the same, you know. Uh, I did uh, a bunch of that prior to being in tech and, uh, you know, I'll say returning to tech, I'm, I'm doing it here again. So um, as Vitaly said, um, I was a freelancer, um, hung around the performance spaces, met amazing people there. Actually, I met Vitaly kind of through there, but you know that's a separate story that I'll get into at some point today. Um, but 
Um, I also enjoyed sort of, you know, working with the community, you know, and that led to me uh, organizing, well, first of all, actually attending the performance meetup in Toronto. Um, and when the actual principal of the meetup wanted to step down, she said that I should take over and I agreed. So I started to do that. Um, I also ended up starting another meetup sort of by necessity, just because I wanted to learn more. And I was like, oh, okay, I'll do it. So I ended up starting the Jamstack meetup. But, you know, we are talking about performance and um, I've just enjoyed running the performance meetup that led to um, sort of like organizing larger scale performance events, um, co-presenting with a couple uh, organizations in Toronto and doing my best to do it myself as well. So where did that lead me? Well, um, you know how it is when sometimes people send you DMs and they say they want to talk. You just well, ignore them, right? Exactly. You know, yeah. I usually block them, you know, but not right. this one. Oh. Um, so I ended up uh, receiving a little DM and uh, we started this conversation. Um, as some of you may know, and some may not, and that's totally fine. Uh, there's a product out there called Web Page Test. It's a performance uh, testing uh, tool um, that's absolutely well regarded. And they were basically building a team around it uh, because it had been acquired by Catchpoint just about a year ago. We celebrating a year this week, actually, in a series of uh, blog posts and videos uh, that you'll be able to see at the, um, at the account. But um, they were interested in building a team and uh, they reached out and uh, we started that conversation and I ended up joining the company, I guess maybe three weeks ago, four weeks ago, three weeks, something like that. It's all a blur now, but, um, but it's amazing because um, I'm working with people I've known already. So um, as I told, uh, I don't know who I was talking to you earlier, but it was like, you know, it's like you join a company, you just give people high fives because you just know them already, you know? And you're like, high five, where's that $10 you owe me, you know? Um, and, uh, it's, uh, it's going to be great, you know, because, um, we are going to basically, you know, I think work closely with the community and which is ultimately going to be my role there. Um, I think officially it's called developer community management, something of, uh, of the sort, but, you know, I consider myself just a homie, you know, I'll be right there with you. But ultimately, I am there to also work closely, like I said, with the community, um, sort of like evangelize performance uh, as best as possible, um, help people sort of like, you know, um, understand performance as well, you know, because I think right now, and Vitaly, you might remember this, um, you know, it seems like such a long time ago, but at the last um, Perf Now in uh, Amsterdam. 18, um, 2018? Yeah, 2019, I think it was, uh, mm -hmm. the last one. And um, yeah, I mean, I did the opening keynote. And um, at some point during the Q&A, you know, someone had asked me, like, what I thought was one of the more important moments in, in performance right now or something like that. It was Tim Cadillac, actually. But, you know, I actually mentioned that I think the work that Lighthouse had done to sort of um, surface the importance of performance conversations at the very least was extremely important simply because you may remember Paul Calvano will probably remember as well um, there was a once upon a time when you talked about performance people were like what do you mean you know and you had to go through this conversation about like you know x y and z regarding performance and people were like oh okay cool but you know in one year out the other uh we have now progressed to where people share Lighthouse scores on Twitter. On Twitter and all. You know, yeah. Which yeah. was absolutely unseen. Like you couldn't get people to talk about stuff like that. In fact, this morning I saw that um, Evan Yu posted something about Vite, you know, and I think I saw a screenshot and looked some, you know, lighthouse or whatever. You saw the green 99 or something like that. But the point is that this was not happening two years ago. And I think um, there are a bunch of things, you know, I don't think, you know, performance has never been in a better place in terms of like, 
you know, the detail, um, the importance. Um, the tooling and, as well. The, the tooling, certainly. But certainly, I think um, the opportunity for more conversation has never been better. Because again, if you mix the fact that people are ready to sort of like share, you know, their lighthouse score and the little bit of guidance that they're getting and that they're probably trying to figure out, I think this is when you need to sort of, you know, engage the community that much more and let them know that there are people out there ready to help them out, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and um, I'm a big fan of this moment right now because you couple that with the fact that also, you know, I came up um, sort of, you know, my interest in performance happened um, over a few sort of moments that I could always remember. Uh, one of them was the Velocity Conference. So if anyone remembers or does not know, um, let me expound. Um, Velocity was one of the several conferences that O'Reilly used to uh, uh, put on and organize. And this one was specifically um, geared towards performance conversations. So you had people like Steve Souders there. Um, I'm sure, Vidal, you probably attended those. You did not. No, okay. the moment when I wanted, it was already, it didn't exist anymore. It's all right. You know, we still love you. Oh, that's um, very nice of you. And so, you know, I was not attending them, but they would have the opening keynotes were always streaming live. I would watch those religiously. Happen, I think, four times a year. New York, which wasn't the, it was the smallest one, but obviously uh, the Bay Area was one. Um, my God, the Bay Area, New York. They had one in China, and I think there was a fourth one. I can't remember. Yeah, it was. A, it felt like every time something, uh, there would be one, you could spot it because there would be a lot of tweets around there. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. It was fantastic. And you coupled that with, um, there was also documentation. There were all these books coming out at the time, the majority of them coming out of O'Reilly. Again, it was like, oh, my God, there's stuff to read. There's, I can watch it online. And it was awesome. And I feel that after Velocity was uh, absorbed into a different conference they had, which was Fluent. Um, and then that whole, actually, and then Fluent Conference vanished. And then the whole sort of like um, uh, conference, uh, you know, the conferences from O'Reilly also vanished as well. And suddenly there was like this big gaping hole for performance conferencing. Um, and a bunch of conversations started, like I was right there, you know, I was like, we need to put something in Toronto. I remember, you know, New York was like having conversations, but then that led to, uh, Perf Matters in San Francisco. Um, it also led to Perf Now in Amsterdam. Um, and you know, it couple... also, I think led to your conference, if I'm not mistaken, didn't it? We did. You know, because again, I believe that the opportunities were there to have independent conferencing, obviously a little smaller than a velocity and 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 um, and uh, what I said, fluent, but I think it would be important. You know what I mean? So in Toronto, I was delighted to have Patrick Meenan. You know, we have a good joke together because it was freezing cold that weekend. And I saw him walking around in like the smallest jacket. And I was like, Patrick, what is going on here? You're in Canada. And he's like, oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I think his face was red, you know? Well, he's and, a big guy. He doesn't need like an extra layer or anything. Hey, whatever it was. But I just thought that was funny. But I had Harry Roberts uh, come down. And that was really interesting because it was the first time I think he and Harry were meeting. And uh, which was like an in interesting moment right there um but like i said perf matters was around uh, and perf now um and i believe they need to sort of like maintain that momentum you know so part of my mandate is going to be to also kind of like look over that kind of situation help out um try to have these sort of like activities and activations across the globe really and, and to sort of like again surface um performance because you know as i told someone this week I think there are like 50 JavaScript conferences every year. 
you know it's kind of like oh another javascript conference and i have nothing you know there's no problem with me in javascript you know we're good we're good friends but um i don't see why we can't have like one or two days of performance conferencing um you know it's ux it's yeah. pure perf now it's seo you know they they are sort of like in the, the the sort of like periphery of our conversations you know because yeah. uh, so, of core web vitals so yeah go yeah, ahead sorry. i think it's it's interesting because it's like one of the really major changes i think for me as well was just to see a lot of conversion happening so it was interesting that we had these conversations in the accessibility camp where like there were important conversations happening about how we're going to deal with accessibility how we're going to sell accessibility how we're going to present accessibility and then the same was happening on the seo world and that performance and now it seems like everything is merging in one way or the other with core web vitals which is kind of also an interesting conversation which we could speak about separately specifically about maybe including other uh, factors that would include or impact the seo ranking like accessibility there was i believe a talk by somebody from Chrome team, if I'm not mistaken, maybe one year ago or so about adding new vitals, web vitals, that would be things like accessibility and security and privacy um, to impact the ranking as well. And that's just changed everything. Right? So, um, and um, I cannot skip that question. Sorry, Henri, uh, sorry. I always wanted to ask that as well. And we have one question from, I believe from Adrian and uh, Nicola as well. I think I is, read Nicola's question, but you know, I think I, I think I know what you're gonna say, but go Yes, ahead. is your name really Helvetica? Okay, so is there is there a sound effect with a drum roll? Um, I'm sure that Jarin has prepared something at least, uh, you know, mentally. Okay, so drum roll please no let's assume that it happens no sorry it, sorry. it, it is not so i hope you guys all still stick around <clears throat> you know it is not what it, it is not so you know i have several reasons for that um some more legitimate than others but the first one is um i come from the arts and you know uh, i always found that you know, having like a pseudonym or a nom de plume, as I would call it, uh, more interesting. Um, so, um, Henri Helvetica, you know, two H's. Henri is my name, by the way, but obviously. Is Helvetica this is your not... real name? Yes. I, I, Are Helvetica... you sure? Hold on. Let me check my expired passport. It's around here somewhere. Yeah, as long as um, it's right there. Okay. Just, just exactly. Check. Um, and, you know, I'll, I'll be honest, um, I wanted a surname that spoke to designers and developers. Um, and I knew the power of a, you know, good name because you would remember, you know, and, uh, and that was really it. You know, I just thought it was kind of slick, whatever. Uh, and, you know, it's very interesting because, um, I used to, uh, at conferences, that was the first thing people would ask me, you know, they're like, is your name Alvetica? You know, and I would just, you know, start my talk and just say, it's not, you know, please remain calm. And, you know, I don't right. do refunds. So how, what is the name? And then we can just move on to the other part of the conversation. Certainly. So like I said, um, I am um, of uh, Caribbean Haitian descent. You know, last name is Brisa. Mm -hmm. uh, and the uh, first name is Henri Robert, actually. And, um, you know, which was another interesting conversation because when I joined WebPage Test, I was like, can I just use my first name? They're like, no, for full name. I was like, dope. <laughs> okay. okay. I'm out Here we go. Now, I think we should be expecting a, a new Twitter trending thread happening right now after this. Uh, this is the mystery has been uncovered. Um, just before we continue, maybe with a, with a few questions that I have here prepared, let's uh, just Please. look in, in what happens in the chat as well. Um, yes. There are a few questions, so very nice questions here. Uh, one of them is uh, from John, who pretty much just wonders about what tools would you recommend to use for testing in general? Specifically, John is referring to accessibility tooling. I mean, yes, you, of course, work on web page tests. That's not surprising what you will be recommending at this point. But is there, so for example, when you're working on any kind of performance audit uh, or just general website audit, 
Uh, what tools do you use in general to get a grasp of what you have in front of you? Okay, so this is something that, um, I mean, at some point I was going to probably bring up and I may have touched on it. Um, I think one of my big mandates next year as well um, is going to be um, sort of like um, a sort of like, uh, you know, a, a sort of tour, if I could call it that, um, but, you know, a, a sort of like an academic uh, sort of bit of, of performance auditing. Um, and the one thing that I realized quite some time ago, you know, before, you know, joining Webpage Test and just in general, uh, I think that people do not know how to do a good, say, waterfall interpretation. Um, and that's something that, you know, I plan on, on, on setting up at some point. Um, you mean a network waterfall, right? Absolutely. You know, yeah. I, I, I believe that at the very basis, basic level of, of auditing, I think being able to read a waterfall will tell you a lot. You know, it's kind of like, you know, if you turn your car on and you see blue smoke coming out the exhaust, it's probably something's up, you know? So uh, there are blue smoke level sort of like visuals that, that you can sort of uh, capture from a, a, a waterfall. And I think that's very important uh, to, to try to understand, you know? And so next year, and that's just the surface level, but I wanna get uh, into deeper details as well uh, at some point. So, you know, just like I'd said that, you know, um, Lighthouse had been able to pique people's curiosities, you know, with respect to what is going on, and then they get that list of recommendations. Um, I think some of that um, interest can also turn into wanting to learn about, you know, how to read, uh, or how to do an audit and read some of the details that look like hieroglyphics, you mm -hmm. know, yeah. like it can be daunting because when they're like, yeah, go into dev tools and people are like, what's going on here? You know, I see all these like little colored stuff and some are thicker than others and what's going on. And, you know, so that's going to be very important moving forward in, in creating uh, a larger um, sort of like performance culture. And this is not just for developers, you know, I've always, you know, I've realized in this, in this last year, um, how the SEO community has embraced performance even more and even on a technical level, because that's something I've, I'm still trying to grasp because you have SEO and then you have some people that call themselves technical SEOs. I'm like, okay, like what's going on here? You know, but the bottom line is that an SEO person may not need to go into the deep, dark, corners of an audit or dev tools but being able to read uh, say a waterfall and interpret what's going on could also sort of like um, sort of like provide some of the information that they need to make maybe some quick decisions or understand what's going on so i personally feel in terms of like auditing i think that's like at the very basic level the waterfall super important you know and again i'll jump into it if you look at web page tests, what's the first thing you see? It's like, depending on the site, obviously, but people look at the waterfalls and you can sort of gauge what's going on in terms of like your requests, you know, what's going up early, X, X Y, and Z. Like it's investigative work at the end of the day, you know, which is, I think, part of the reason why it had this sort of like, you know, um, eh, this so so popularity, like it just wasn't always fun, you know, to some yeah. people to just kind of look at a waterfall. Go ahead. I think from my perspective, there was sort of this incredible article written by, I will not be able to remember the name now. There was a really incredible, very detailed blog post about how to read a waterfall. And if you actually type oh, in. You, so you're talking about Matt Hobbs. Yes, Matt Hobbs, yes. right? How to Shout out to Matt Hobbs, by the yes. way. Who Incredible had, uh... article, really, really good stuff. So that's always, I mean, I learned so much, just um, yeah. kind of really breaking it all down. I think the question specifically that John brought up was uh, about tools, about websites that are in progress. So if you're building something and you want to stay on track in terms of performance, but you don't have it built out yet, 
uh, specifically he's speaking about um, single page application. How do you, you know, as you keep building, how do you ensure that you are on track? This is, I think, uh, one before the website even exists or the application even released. Okay, so, you know, at some point, you know, some of this tooling that we're using, you'll be able to, so for example, you know, um, who's I thinking of recently? Uh, oh, anyways, but, you know, in terms of like being able to maintain and keep in track of, of what you're doing with uh, your apps. Sorry, I'm just reading something here. Yes, it is easier to say and remember, uh, Shanda. But um, um, in terms of keeping track, you know, it, it sort of creating this sort of like CI, CD situation, you know, um, there is some tooling out there. Um, you have, you know, CLI to sort of like integrate and, you know, keeping track of, of um, your, you know, hopefully not too many regressions um, and understanding that, understanding that much. Because again, you know, I, I, I get back to the idea and Steve Souter said this too, you know, there's some elements of performance that, you know, it seems a bit more complicated uh, and which is why people step away. Um, and, you know, if you've noticed the trend right now, just in general, the improvement in developer experience is like numero uno, you know, how can we make this developer experience so that you do not have to do too much work? And that's where some of the, the developers potentially drop off uh, just in general, you know, and I'm not saying all of them uh, because, you know, you have some companies that have teams, you know, Shopify, you know, Colin Bendel is there. So they do like, you know, the depth of work they do is just like ongoing. But, you know, you have agencies, you know, that are starting to really um, tune in to, to uh, performance, you know, they may not want to do the heavy lifting, right? So the goal is to create some developer tooling that is going to make this as easy as possible, um, you know, that, that, that won't make it like, you know, uh, you know, configuring Webpack, you know, yeah. Which is why, you know, I, uh, my, my hair is. You're not alone, there, though. Was there once upon a time. You know yeah, what I'm it's, yes. It's, it's also exactly what you're saying, because I see a lot of companies now um, kind of really investing in DX position, where it's about we need that product to be um, kind of the developer's user ex well, developer's experience needs to be, you know, the best. And so this actually also requires slightly different view on things it's a different way of approaching usability accessibility navigation information architecture all of that and this is a yeah. kind of a part of that is also kind of communicating with the community and seeing what people are interested in doing research on that user group right yeah. so i mean look at look at the and i'm not calling anyone out but you know this is not too far too hard to find you know the amount of people who complain sometimes about like you know configuring like aws mm -hmm. you know and it's kind of like they, they go crazy and um and there was a tweet recently about someone just migrating away from them and just going straight to like i think Vercel or something like that but these are companies that are investing like you said in the dx and because i don't think i i don't think there's raw data about this but i think if you have poor dx there's a chance that the end user may not have the best time either yeah, you know? because the developers didn't use the product. Yeah. They're like, let me just get this out of the way. It works. It works. On to the next project. And the mm -hmm. user's like, I don't know what's going on here. You know, so I think the DX is something that we're all working on. Um, and even, you know, at, uh, you know, uh, web page test, you know, you could attest to the fact that, you know, Pat Meenum was like, listen, I'm an engineer. I don't design, you know, so people used to say like, oh, my God, web page test, when you look at it, it's like, looking at like a 1990s, you know, What site. do you have against 1990s site? I think that Gears Jersey is very incredible. I, I, it, 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 I totally are, miss but, Rainbow Gifts. Do you miss Rainbow Gifts? I, I mean, 90s were good, but I'm, a, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to vote for 91. Um, I mean, you're being difficult again. This is always the same story with you. I'm like, 
But, you know, to get back to that point is that if you look at how WebPage test was in terms of like, it's raw, just like boxy layout. It's like, you know, you're getting the data. That's all you want. Uh, and then, you know, we go to catch point and we're able to sort of like make some investments and make it look a little slicker, make, make it look a little bit more approachable. And people are like, Hey, you know, like who are, you know, very accustomed to web page tests are like, this is amazing. You know what I mean? Because it was like, you know, a fresh coat of paint, you know? So this is part, and that was a small part of it, but this is part of like the whole developer tooling, the DX that we're trying to improve so that, you know, people will feel comfortable doing like deeper dives, big, bigger audits, um, you know I mean, right. et cetera. Yeah. So uh, speaking about that, actually, I think it's, I find it quite remarkable and quite important that uh, over the last few years, there was this, or there is this ongoing Google Aurora project, which essentially is an attempt to improve frameworks out of the box, to improve libraries out of the box and so on. And just recently you tweeted something that actually caught uh, my attention. Like it always I did? does. Uh, well, it's your third version. I'm not sure if this is you, but according to Twitter, it's only Helvetica B3.0. Oh yeah, yeah for you. sure. I just want to make sure it was like I heard that right. So go ahead. Yeah. What was it? Yes. And so I just posted a link in the chat as well. And essentially, uh, you kind of uh, posted a link or a screenshot of uh, Web oh. Almanac 2021. Yes. Right. Uh, well, on the state of CMS. And I'm wondering, really, we are trying to tap into some of the existing frameworks and libraries and tooling out there, right, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, why is it so slow? So it's not like if you look at, uh, you know, if you, dear friends, if you click on that link, you will be able to, I mean, I can also share the screen. Maybe that would be easier, actually. Let me just share the screen right here, right? Um, I'm wondering just why is it so difficult? Like, why don't we see this massive jumps? Like, all of a sudden, you know, WordPress fixed everything and off you go. When you think about image optimization of the box, when you think about um, the performance issues out of the box as well. And so when we look at the core web vitals, right, across the different mm -hmm. uh, CMS that we're using mm -hmm. out there. Well, it seems like, you know, it's not too good, I would say. Yeah, it's, it's like not. It's, uh, I mean, why, why is that? Okay, so, I mean, the first thing I want to ask is why you're not in dark mode. That well, is, that's... like, I'm blind right now. What is going I'm on? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'll work on that, I promise. Okay, so um, the thing is, CMS is, you know, ultimately CMS is, uh, any CMS, by the way, is trying to provide the best user experience possible, you know, um, in a sense that we'll take WordPress as an example, simply because yesterday was state of the word, by the way, with our annual um, sort of, uh, you know, state of the union at WordPress and, you know, what's going on with the, uh, the platform, you know, they have prided themselves on the idea that anyone could walk up and, you know, start, you know, building a site at 9 a.m. on a weekend and done possibly that evening. And that comes with, um, you know, I think, unfortunately, you know, in order to ease that sort of um, the developer experience. yeah ultimately it is a developer experience but you know in their case they are really trying to keep the bar as low as possible so that anyone can start and i think that just involves a lot of details that are not necessarily conducive to um, best performance practices you know so ultimately what we're trying to create is a situation where you can have you know, top-notch performance and a, a developer and user experience that's also going to be top-notch, you know. Um, where they meet, we're not sure, you know, because ultimately, you know, as you can see here, and you know what, I will say there's probably a lot of legacy here yeah. because yeah. Um, you're looking at, you know, WordPress, which has been around 18 years, and, you know, we've been really tackling, um you know, we'll say performance, say excessively like, you know, uh, pedal to the metal, I'd say in the last like three, four years with all like the new metrics and stuff like that. So this is exposing possibly a, a lot of legacy. 
Um, but if you look at a company like Wix, you know, who has been doing uh, a lot of work, a lot of uh, heavy lifting, focused on performance. There's some other slides I think I posted that yep. you can see like the differences, right? But the point is, I think that, you know, we are trying to create a situation where, you know, we can have like a user-friendly CMS, you know, drag and drop and all that stuff. But that involves a lot of sort of like taxing resources, you know, like a lot of JavaScript uh, and other, you know, things that come into play that really hamper performance, you know. Um, and so it's about finding that happy medium. I'll give you a quick example, even though it doesn't have to do with CMSs, but, you know, I was speaking with um, Zach Tolman recently, um, who's at uh, Condé Nast, so magazines, uh, media company. And he gave a talk once that I'll never forget. And he was like, listen, I know people hate third parties, they hate ads, but we serve them, but we're trying to do our best to serve them in the best and most responsible way possible. They're not going to cut the ads out. I mean, that's something that you have to sort of live with. You know, how do you create uh, an environment where the ad is not, you know, uh, does not really uh, downgrade your site's, you know, user experience, performance, et cetera, et cetera. I think CMSs are also challenged in that end in the sense that, you know, you know, we're likely a room of good developers above average. Um, but when you have something like WordPress, uh, you know, a very classic CMS that just wants, you know, my mom to start a blog or a business, you know, how do you handle that? You know, she's not, you know, jumping in and, you know, going to Netlify or Vercel and, you know, tell me she's using Next, you know, I'll be like, what mom? What are you talking about? You yeah, know, very cool mom. She, she is. And, uh, but so that's what I think is happening uh, on that, that, that uh, end of town. And to be very honest, um, I don't know if you saw this since you go through my tweets, um, but uh, WordPress announced some, some of the core developers at WordPress announced uh, a performance team efforts to really tackle performance. Now they're really in the first month, month and a half of like, you know, getting organized and stuff like that, but they are officially making that, you know, effort to tackle a lot of the issues at WordPress. And again, 18 years of legacy, there's a lot to sort of like deal with. Um, there's some people who definitely know um, that there are ways of making WordPress a lot faster uh, or fast in general, mm -hmm. but it, it takes a bit more than just sort of like dragging and dropping stuff. And um, I think they know that. Um, unfortunately, not all of the community does. And I get back to the education part of, of uh, performance because I think there are a lot of people in that community who are, I won't say oblivious, but it's not, you know, on the front burner. I'll yeah. say that much. Yeah. Um, and I've been lucky enough that I've joined their slacks and I can see and hear some of the conversations and, you know, some, some of it's eye opening. Yeah, so it's um, uh, there's a good point by Berwin Powell who said that it's probably third-party uh, plugin themes and anything of that kind that could be slowing them down, of course, as well. To some extent, the fault of the system on its own, the framework on its own. Um, it's just I think it's a very important approach to kind of take and bring it as far as possible to kind of provide a lightweight and uh, performant thing out of the box. Yeah, uh, we also had yeah. You want to say something? I mean, I, I was going to say <clears throat> one of my um, goals, and this is something that I've been working on for a little while, is that, you know, you're, you know, everyone here, we're probably, again, above average. Uh, we understand performance, especially since we're here. Um, and um, not everyone's like that. And you know, I've been doing my best to keep that door open. Anyone could come in and try to learn. Um, and especially with the WordPress community, because last night, again, Matt mentioned they're at 43.1% of the internet, you know. And, you know, I think the key is to make sure that we create this environment where they feel comfortable joining, you know, core 
performance people. And uh, I think, you know, moving forward, I think that's a big deal for me uh, because the more people feel comfortable knowing that they can sort of learn something in, in not so hostile environments. Like, what do you mean? You don't know about waterfalls? What do you mean? You don't know about Broadly? You know, like that conversation, the tone has to be like very like, hey, yep. come on in. I'll, yeah, I'll exactly. show you a few things, right. you know. So right. go ahead. Yeah. So uh, I did want to, before I jump in another question by Andre yes. here, I did want to bring up something that was a journey for us. And I think mm -hmm. I would love to ask attendees here in the chat. Um, I think that many of us had to at least look up the Core Web Vital scores for the websites and applications that you're working on. Um, it was a massive journey for us. It was like a year long journey where we actually ended up where we are today. I want to show off just a little bit. I hope that uh, nobody minds. Um, no, they were no. actually just um, going to publish an article about uh, what we have done. This was so hard. I had no idea it would be so difficult. Mm -hmm. So this was a very, very painful story. If we actually looked into it from like for the entire year, it was ups and downs all the time. So for those of you who've never seen this before, that's essentially just a dashboard you get in your Google Search Console, where it shows you your um, performance in Core Web Vitals on mobile and on desktop. And on desktop, we used to be in the green zone for a very long time. But it's so, it's so interesting that the mobile is so nuanced. And sorry to hijack your time here, only, but no, I just no, wanted no. to kind of provide some context here. Because we've been on this amber zone for eight months for one very simple reason. For one very, very, very simple reason. Most people who are attending or visiting the site are perfectly fine. We have a pretty you know, good CDN and everything is in order. The problem is that we have a very good or very large portion of people coming from India to mm -hmm. the site. And in India, we have a lot of people who are not using a fancy iPhone, who are not using a fancy Android. We are lucky if this is an Android that at least you know, three years old or maybe three years old or so. So yeah. they were coming with an Android on a slow connection and they had a pretty bad experience because it's again, it's a slow connection. And it's a poor Android. And as a result, our mobile score was penalized because we were just not hitting enough like, um, um, you know, good web vitals in India. That was it, right? Yep. Everything else was brilliant all across the world. And that was kind of keeping us away from it. And frankly, we just didn't know. So we optimized the hell out of India. If you happen to be joining us from India, uh, I hope you'll enjoy this experience. We have optimized a lot just for that. And it took us, I don't know, like one and a half months just to optimize for that use case, just to see, you know, if we get to the green zone, maybe we'll get better search, tra traffic results and so on. Uh, and we did see a bump. Actually, so when we look here, we did see a little bump once we moved to the green zone, but mm -hmm. it seemed to be have, have normalized a little bit more now again, yeah. right? But I just wanted to show this as an example. This was so much work. Yep. So yep. much work. And we actually tried to, you know, we tried to be performant and we tried to be accessible and we tried to make, uh, you know, all the good things. And yep. I'm just wondering anybody uh, who is jump, kind of joining us on this call today, what was the journey for you to better performance? Was it an easy one? Was it a really difficult one? Do you find yourself comfortable with the you know, green scores and core web vitals? I find that many organizations, many companies have so much struggle trying to get in a good zone. It's just so hard and there are many kind of legacy, legacy things that they cannot adjust. So Henri, from your perspective, kind of looking into this, what do we need to do as the you know, on the web, because when you look around, most of the experiences we get are pretty suboptimal. We have mm -hmm. cookie pop-ups, we have yep. all those things showing up, and everything is just slow. <laughs> Doesn't matter what you do, even if you're on 5G, right? Then you might be in a better place, but most of us, majority of customers will not be like that. So how can we actually change it? We've been talking about this now for 20 years doing this thing, well, more or less. I mean, so I, what, I, I... what do we, please fix it. Okay, I got to go then. Um, right. You know, I, I think there are a lot of things to consider. Um, like you said, you know, we are a sort of global community, you know, and, you know, I can drive a relatively, you know, fast car in, you know, most of the American streets, 
But if I take that same fast car down some dusty roads in India, it may not be the greatest experience. Um, you know, this is the reason why, for example, um, Pat Meenan, I remember, I used to, I still do love um, his talks. He talked about when he was at Google um, years back, um, how, you know, Google would search, their search page was, was different in certain parts of the world, you know, um, you will not get the, the, the sort of like G7 search page in sort of like parts of APAC. And um, these are like potentially extreme, you know, considerations, say for like a media company like Smashing, you know, because you want to make sure that you provide the same experience for, you know, San Francisco as you do for India in terms of like content, but how do you do that, uh, you know, uh, in light of the constraints. And that's where people like us, you know, people like Paul Calvano at Akamai, you know, people like Harry Roberts will come around and, and try to um, provide a, a solution. Now, um, like, and, and it's funny because you mentioned, you know, exactly what you were going through. And I don't know if anyone here has gone and read the web almanac uh, from HTTP archive. There's a specific page um, listing pretty much the exact same thing um, where they show you how the core vitals in major G7 countries are pretty good. Brazil, phew, you know, under 10. India, under 10 um, and stuff like that. So these are the challenges that we're um, trying to deal with. You know, and like you said, you try to optimize as much as possible. Um, but, you know, at some point it may take, you know, some, you know, uh, sort of like, uh, you know, potentially providing, you know, a, a very much different set of resources for some of these, from some of these um, uh, geos, you know, um, again, bringing it back to, you know, even I was talking to my boss, shout out to Gina, by the way, she's listening, you know, who's from India. And, you know, they know that this has to happen. So if anyone's unfamiliar with this, the Google has a team called NBU, which stands for Next Billion Users. And they're constantly out trying to uh, make sure that they understand these markets as best as possible. Um, years ago, maybe about two years ago, maybe three uh, a bunch of Googlers uh, from like the speed team, et cetera, et cetera, went and spent two weeks in India hanging out. They're actually posting photos, uh, but they're trying to understand the market, you know? So these are things that are challenging, you know, don't get me wrong. I think it's going to be not that easy, uh, but if we keep the idea that we're trying to serve um, content as lean as possible, um, when you need it, and that means taking sometimes the extra steps to make sure that, oh, well, you know what? They have poor network conditions here. All right, we have a solution for that, you know? Um, they're on a, you know, uh, degraded, you know, a sort of like an old phone because something people may or may not realize that, like you said, Vitaly, you know, in these territories, like, you know, India and whatnot, and you know, like I said, parts of APAC, you know, they're not on two thousand dollar iPhones, you know, or Androids. Uh, they're on that hundred dollar Android, hundred fifty, you know, um, which is why at one point, and I could probably post a link, uh, Facebook had this library where they had realized that even the brand new phones you were buying, some low end. Androids had like very old technology in the phones. That's how they're able to keep them cheap. They worked, but they didn't provide the best experience when, you know, uh, a big site came around. So these are things that, you know, there are some amazing engineers out there that have been trying to uh, make use of this data so that we can sort of create, you know, the site. Uh, or the, the the sort of like um, application to work as as best as possible. Mm -hmm. 
you know, right. uh, yeah. it's tough, you know, don't get me wrong. Like this, there's, there's a bunch of curveballs, you know, and, you know, when you least expect it, some crazy is happening, um, which is why, you know, some of the information and data you, you're showing us, which was like real data, it's like, here's what's happening in India. They're not having fun. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah I mean? absolutely. So um, that's, uh, that's one's quite a journey. We actually will be publishing a very detailed article about what exactly we ended up doing there. Um, mm -hmm. I did want to just mention, because it also the question came up in the chat uh, mm -hmm. on one of the tools that I find quite useful, uh, we yes. personally, uh, which is Trio. Uh, it's quite affordable. Um, it's very cheap, if you ask me, actually. <laughs> that kind of allows you to track, um, probably way too cheap, um, if you ask me. Uh, we can also to track how you're performing in terms of core vitals over time, and also shows you the specific pages that have uh, you know, maybe high LCP, FIT, and CLS, yep. and so on and so forth. I uh, highly recommend you to try it out and play with it. It's a wonderful little tool to use. Yep. I right. mean, you know, the, it, it, as we were talking about the core web vitals and that, that whole sort of scenario, um, a lot of that is, 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 is evolving, you know, yep. and um, I'm, I'm Mr. Optimist, you know, so when people are like, oh, core web vitals this, core web vitals that, I'm like, you know, listen, you know, this, this, this is something that, was was introduced and is being tweaked and you know refined all the time um so when it was introduced it was core of vitals we saw you know within like you know maybe eight nine months later some some changes came about because obviously they're able to sort of like parse more data understand you know uh and then you know some changes came about again during chrome dev summit um, and, you know, what we know now is core vitals may not be it next summer. You know, we're not sure. But the point is that, you know, we're arming ourselves with the information, the data, and being able to make, like, a learned decision, I think, is absolutely key. You know, um, even though we do have, like, a world audience, but, you know, if 80% of your audience is in India, you're going to make, you know, according um, you're going to make, you know, some decisions according to that audience, yep. you know, um, and stuff like that. So yep. that, that's, that's partly it. Yep. All right. Well, Paul, that the time flies by quickly, uh, but no there was way. also one question that Andrea has asked now half an hour ago, precisely, <laughs> actually, and we just got to it. No worries, Andrea. Um, what is the best way for you to deal with cookie banners when it comes <laughs> to auditing a web page using web page test? So dealing with banners specifically? Or uh, cookie banner, cookie models, cookie dialogues, cookie banners. Um, I feel like I may have to come back to you on that, you know, uh, if that's possible. And whoever that is, sure. uh, shoot me like a little DM uh, on Twitter or something like that. Because um, I want to make sure I get the question and my answer right. Yeah, so, um, because good. I think it's, it's also very interesting because one of the things that we experienced as well on some pages was very surprising to us. Uh, I remember Martin Split's uh, tweet at oh. some point mm -hmm. where he said that um, he's working at Google in Zurich and he said essentially that cookie banners should not affect core web vitals. They should not affect, um, well, essentially mostly CLS because you have some layout shifts happening. Right? <laughs> However, exactly... Actually no, guys, please, but go ahead. However, exactly that happened to us because we got penalized on, I don't know, four, 500 pages for just mm. that. So essentially it was showing us that uh, the major CLS shift happened. And there is an article on WebDev, uh, mm. which around that, which I found quite useful. WebDev, uh, cookie banners, WebDev, yeah. web cookie banners, CLS. Uh, oh yes, here we go. I'm going to paste it in here. That mm -hmm. was really helpful. So maybe if you have any issues around cookie banners, that could be helpful for you as well. It's uh, by Katie Hempenius. She wrote an incredible one. Shout out to Katie. Um, she, um, yeah, because I, I was going to mention CLS, but I want to make sure I, I got that right. You know, the, the, the CLS is also interesting because um, it is sort of like this user experience metric that goes from zero to one mm -hmm. um, and it was once upon a time not really regarded as you know much uh, of a um, deterrent on your 
Lighthouse score because it was, uh, I think, worth like maybe like 5% at one point. I know that's been bumped. I don't know if it's 10 or 15 now. I have to double check. I'm forgetting. Um, but, you know, it is um, sort of like what I like to call a bit of like an annoyance index check, you know, uh, because of exactly that sort of like user experience that it doesn't provide if it's off, right? Um, and then again, you know, there, there are definitely a bunch of ways to sort of like, it, it, they're proposing to deal with that. Um, but again, I'd be happy to go into like heavier details. But yeah, the, the CLS at one point, I used to sort of like disregard it because it wasn't worth that much. And mm -hmm. I was always telling people to put their eggs into like the, the LCP basket. And I think even the TBT basket. Mm -hmm and yeah, stuff like so. that because that right there would be like half your lighthouse score yeah. and that could be like significant uh, in terms of like uh, what uh, what gets uh, published yep. so um but yeah again i get back to the idea that you know there are a lot of decisions that have to be made you know if you are condi nast you know you know you just have to work with that you know and you may not get to zero on your cls ever you know but as long as you manage it and understand what it's providing in terms of like, you know, uh, maybe unmanageable user experience, you know, it's there. Cool. Maybe you spend a bit more time making sure like some of the area, other areas of the, the performance um, uh, scoring uh, improve, yep. you know. All right. Well, we are almost at the hour, but I do have to ask you the final, 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 final question, Henri. This yes. is you looking into the future and telling us what is going to happen. Now, what do you expect from the wonderful upcoming new year coming up our way, 2022, both in terms of performance and pretty much everything else? Uh, you are an optimist, so you always look at the bright side of things. So tell us, what should we be expecting in 2022? Oh, I mean, I think um, the uh, seeing more developers, uh, you know, sharpen their performance acumen. You know, I think, um, you know, I know my team is going to be out there, you know, uh, doing their best to uh, provide that kind of, you know, uh, service. Uh, I know I myself will be out there working with developers, listening to developers, uh, making sure that you know I field you know queries uh, and and you know if there you know um, suggestions about you know some stuff that they're going through like you know you, you may have mentioned you know some of your research and you're like oh this is happening this is happening you know this is the kind of stuff that we want to keep our ear to the ground uh, and understand and hear what what people are going through I think that's again I get back to the idea I think you know, there, there's been no better time to be into performance right now. You know, if, if it interests you, we're going to be out there helping you out. That's for Excellent. sure. Over at Web Pitch Test. And then, you know, you know some of the, the sort of like known uh, entities out there are doing their best to do the work, but it's always nice to have like a bigger team and, and bigger representation for this sort of like performance culture. You know, right. and should will 2022 be the best year ever for what for everyone for everything i mean i'm gonna say you know considering where we're at now yes excellent that's yeah. exactly what i wanted to finish up because if you if you had said no i'd be like oh no oh, I, I would accept even a maybe even a maybe would be okay but no, yes no, is no. even better than that. no no of course listen how could it not be a good year when we're going to have smashing conference in San Francisco? In oh, well, you are, you make me blush again. You only, you always do the same thing. Um, exactly. Actually, we do have some plans for next year, dear friends. And we also have some plans for this year. Uh, and if you look, by the way, at, you know, the things that we have prepared for you, we should actually talk about this with you as well, Henri. Please. Uh, we have, of course, a lot of stuff coming up. Even for this year and the beginning of the next year too, we have uh, the conference that is already announced. So feel free to take a look at what is happening. Also, the lineup is there too. And we also have some workshops coming up in the next few months on a lot of front-end stuff, a lot of UX stuff as well. Uh, accessibility, ethical design, front-end testing. That's going to be a very good one if you wanted to dive into front-end testing. Uh, 
you will not be disappointed, trust me. Uh, and then the HTML email, data visualization, but Amelia, TypeScript, quite a lot of stuff coming our way. Also some UX ones that are going to awesome. be announced. Awesome. I uh, mean, we need to add you on the list. Only. I was going to say that's that, that the first priority, but the second priority would be, I always, I always like to shout out Nathan Curtis because he's another guy with two first names. And, All right. Uh, I didn't know that. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he's a good guy. But, you know, again, uh, Vitaly, congratulations for sort of getting this back up at going, you know, and for anyone who's never attended a smashing conference, um, you know, I'll keep saying it. It's extremely well curated, you know, a lot of fun to attend. Um, venues always well selected. You know, I don't know where. Oh, there he is, Vitaly. Um, so I, I, I'm definitely looking forward to that. Um, and it's always good, fun community stuff. You yeah, know, thank you so much, Ali. As well, oh, you're so welcome. Words. So uh, welcome. And we'll we'll be staying in touch for sure for, for many, sure, for many, sure, for many, sure. many other adventures. I mean, um, I, I want to make a couple quick announcements. I know we talked about a little bit about a word a WordPress and whatnot, and I talked about how they're they're organizing a performance team. Believe it or not, in one hour, I actually have uh, another meetup online and specifically dealing with the WordPress a uh, couple core. Um, members and a couple uh, developers who are going to talk about how to make WordPress fast. Um, I'll post the link in the chat in a hot second. And that's sort of like on the business side and on the fun side. And I don't know if you saw this vividly this morning. But 17th? Yes. I hope you could join us. See, I pay attention. I pay attention. But please, yeah. please introduce, please introduce the thing. So basically, December 17th, folks. Um, ladies and gentlemen and non-binaries, um, CSS is turning 25. And just like I, you, Henri, you're 25 now, 26. Exactly, now. exactly. Right. You know, it's the oil of LA. You know, it just <laughs> works beautifully. And um, we're going to do a little game show with um, myself, um, um, Miriam Susan, who's on the CSS working group as well as Lynn Fisher, who's a phenomenal CSS um, designer, engineer, like her work is beautiful. If you've ever seen those, those uh, one single div um, challenges, she blows them out the water. Uh, but so we're going to have fun. We're going to have a bunch of questions uh, and you know, people will be able to test out their CSS knowledge. Um, and one last thing. Uh, Netscape 1.0 birthday today. Oh, so, how are you going to celebrate? I don't know. I don't know. But uh, I'm going to I'm going to tweet out some stuff about that because I think that's that's you know a significant moment in history that people tend to forget. Yeah, maybe it's time for us to just create a new you know, I don't know Netscape new account LinkedIn group. That's the most corporate uh, Netscape thing one can do. I think at this point. I know, right? Yeah, we, we should uh, just have to do it, I think. Or maybe, like, what about, a, I have an idea. What about something like a Netscape meetup? I mean, do you think Mark Andreessen would come down for it? We could ask. Yeah, we could. That's um, all, <laughs> don't it, see a lot of excitement in your eyes, but that's okay. Well, that's right, fair right. Enough. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us, Emily. It was a pleasure hosting you. Uh, everyone, dear friends, joining us as well. Thank you so much for coming. Um, Absolutely. Um, I just want to say, like, if anyone has questions, always hit me on Twitter. It's the best place to find me. You know, happy to, you know, even jump on a Zoom and kick it. You know, if you guys want to talk about perf stuff, just personally, one-on-one, I'm, I'm with it. Excellent. You know, and so. as you know already from uh, from the conversation we had earlier, well, if you send a message to only, he'll probably answer it in Twitter. He's one of those people. All right. With this in mind, thank you so much, everyone, for joining. And uh, thanks for Jarin and Keris in the back. Yeah, yeah, waving at us all the way from Hong Kong, although it's really, really late, I'm sure. Um, thank you so much for organizing it and running us and running it all. Have a good sleep, day, morning, lunch, whatever, whatever. whatever. or just uh, happy rewatching later as well. Thanks so much for joining and see you next time. All right, cheers, everyone. Bye. Bye bye, everyone. All right, thank you. How does this work? Where am I? Oh, there it is. Uh, I guess there's no like back room. <laughs>
it's like that's it i just gotta leave all right i'll uh i mean i'll talk to you guys later maybe we'll jump on a on a call afterwards and sort of like yeah, do a little good, recap or good, something good fun. thanks uh thanks Henry. And, yeah yeah uh, for sure and you guys gotta go to bed more, more, yeah we'll go to bed in a bit it'd be even more fun to hang out in person but you know. <laughs> that's what i'm saying all soon, right man soon, soon. Cheers. all right see you man have a good night good night uh, bye, bye.